everybody, Sean Tubbs here. Thanks for tuning in. This is the Universal Audio Aux Amp Top Box. This thing's going to allow you to get amazing studio quality guitar tones anywhere and at any volume out of your tube amp. Let's just check out the key features real quick. With the Amp Top Box, you're going to get a premium, no compromise analog reactive load box and guitar recording system for tube guitar amps. This is going to allow you to instantly access album quality mic and speaker cabinet tones via the front panel rig control. You're also going to get five finely tuned guitar amp attenuation levels from off to whisper quiet to full band volume. Universal Audio utilizes a process called dynamic speaker modeling which emulates speaker breakup and cone cry and it's just spot on. You're also going to get world-class Universal Audio EQ, compression, delay, and reverb effects built in. Now on the back, you're going to be able to choose between 4, 8, and 16 ohm operation, which is awesome. On the front panel, you're going to get a headphone out for silent practice with cranked tones. Back to the back panel, you're going to get balanced TRS line outs and also digital outs for stereo recording. Now all of this pairs with either the OX mobile app or desktop app, and it's all done over Wi-Fi for editing and saving presets. Okay guys, those are a few of the great features on the Oxbox. Let's get to some sounds. I thought I would just start uh, initially with the, uh, the reactive load part of the Aux. It's amazing, it works really well, uh, excellent amp uh, attenuation. Now the reactive load part means that it literally is reacting to your amplifier in the same way a speaker would. And, and I found that to be true when I was checking it out. It's like, wow, this thing still retains all the dynamics as I keep attenuating back that I would uh, have if I was full, fully cranked. Now, obviously, you're not going to feel SPLs once you get it down to, you know, like a whisper volume. But as far as just the highs to lows of the amp and how it responds to your pick attack, it stays exactly the same. So uh, this amp is liz -out, um for sure. So I'm going to start with it at... Uh, you know, wide open, which would be position five, and then I'll take it all the way down to position one, which is whisper quiet, so you guys can kind of get a, an idea of what's going on. So here's the wide open amp tone. <laughs> Let's back it off one more. Now at that volume, I can almost uh, talk over it. And what I dig is I can still get the same response backing off the guitar. Back it off one more, and we're even quieter. And at that point, I can pretty much just talk over it. And then, of course, we can get to one, which is basically whisper volume. You can almost hear the guitar more than the amp at that point. So yeah, it's super usable, works great, and sorry if I'm looking away, I'm, I'm looking at my Pro Tools rig to make sure I haven't like murdered something at the input. Okay, so that's how that works. I'm going to go ahead and shut the amp off and let's get to some of the, uh, the digital part. Now that was full analog path, now we're, we're checking out the digital side. And what I thought I would do is instead of trying to go through every single cabinet, every single mic and things like that, I thought I would just kind of set up six uh, rigs that I would most typically use and just kind of quickly, uh, quickly run through them. I mean, my whole thing with this rig was 
to just kind of find my sound. I guess that's what I loved is it was so easy just to kind of lock in on a cab really quick and a couple mics that I'm used to using. Uh, the virtual mic models are so good and of course the dynamic speaker modeling is just killer because you know if you look at what an IR is and IRs are great but an IR is a very it's a very static uh, model. Um, if you look at uh, dynamic uh, models that's a way, that's a model of the whole thing. So if it's a speaker, that's a complete model of that uh, speaker. It's, uh, it's basically the same technology that UA used for the, the Neve 1073 model, uh, the 1176 model, the LA-2A model, um, and those are pretty much known all over the world as the, uh, the best models. So they use the same exact technology when it came to getting the mics right and, and the, you know, the cab modeling and speaker modeling correct. So uh, let's just start with this first model. This is kind of where I would start for my rig. It's basically a 4x12 cab. Uh, it's got 25 watt kind of greenbacks in it. Uh, Royer 57 combination. So I've got my condenser mic and my ribbon mic that I'm totally used to. And I've even got uh, a delay on right now because uh, a lot of you that listen to my channel, you always hear a little bit of delay there. So um, this is just kind of a, a starting point. So this, once again, is the... Uh, it's, you know, a greenback 4x12, uh, Royer 57, with a little bit of delay. So that's where I started. Right now I'm basically running it mono. Everything is like straight up on it. There's maybe a little bit more Royer right now than there is 57. Um, there is a room mic happening and uh, matter of fact, let's just listen to that guy real quick. I'll solo it up. It's one of the things that I really dug. And what's cool is uh, if you want to adjust the room mic, especially on the fly and you don't have an iPad with you, you can adjust it here. So you can see it's adjusting on the software which is a really cool feature, especially if you just want to tweak it real quick on the fly. So that's just the room mic. And there's all kinds of combinations of uh, room mics you can choose. Um, condensers, uh, ribbons, uh, dynamics. Uh, you can do them in stereo pairs. You know, it's kind of whatever you want you can do. I, uh, I kind of settled on the, uh, the 67. I really liked that in the room. So now if we go ahead and, and back that back off, you can hear how it kind of adds. I'll, I'll bring it up a little bit. Just some air. Shut it off. sounds great and, and you've got six different mics obviously to choose between on the cabinets as, as well you know I could switch to um, a 414 on instead of the dynamic I could switch to a 67 instead I can also knock these guys off axis like if I wanted to take the 57 off axis <laughs> take some of the edge off do the same thing with the Royer. So just it's kind of endless the combinations and it would take me forever to go through all of them but that's that's kind of the idea and you can also pan this stuff out like right now I've got it running mono but we could go ahead and say let's Let's move the 57 left and let's put this guy right, the Royer. And what's that sound like? It's a little more spread out. Maybe we want to move the room to the left side. Pretty huge sounding. Now with the room too, the thing I didn't uh, point out is you can make the room darker. It'll kind of add a rug in there. Not necessarily darker, but um, just uh, less open sounding. And of course,
course, you know, you're hearing a delay right now, and the delay models, the 1176 model and the plate reverb model, as well as the EQ models, are all just killing. They sound really great. So right now you're hearing the delay. There she is right there. So that's the, uh, the uh, precision delay, which I've always dug. I've got, you know, the delay kind of darkened up. That's kind of my, my thing and kind of short. Now I could add reverb. I'll turn that delay off and we'll turn on the plate reverb and let you hear that really quick. Just sounds killer. Now the other thing too is of course you can add uh, compression uh, if you'd like. 1176. Kind of bring that level up a little bit. And that just sounds huge. Now, of course, I'm gunning the level a little bit on it, and, but that's kind of what I like doing with an 1176. I, I don't necessarily want to compress that much. It just brings a character in with a little bit of compression. That's kind of how I dial it. It sounds killer. Um, and of course you can add EQ. The EQs are great. You can get it in kind of a graphic like this. You know, so say you want to tame uh, some top end or maybe even add top end. <laughs> stuff off so you can just hear the EQ. And you can get that in a graphic style or you can look at it more in this if you really want to get tweaky and change uh, uh, bell curves and things like that you can look at it uh, in that way as, uh, as well. And of course all of this can be stored in, in presets and then all those presets you can put into six different rig positions. So going back to the rig positions, um, right now I've got it in the first cab that I picked, which is kind of, like I said, this is my go-to cab. Now the next rig is going to be more of a deluxe cab, kind of a Fender Deluxe style cabinet 1x12, stayed with the same mics, and I basically left some plate reverb in there. So for me, it just sounded more like that typical Fender tone. And it still sounds great for overdrive. So that's something I might use for like a more honky solo tone. It just depends on, on what I'm doing, but I, I really liked that cabinet with this kind of mic setup. Just a little bit of plate reverb. Now I'll go to the next rig. This is a 4x10 cab and I liked it uh, as really kind of a pristine clean sound. And I did change the mics this time. I went to a 414 and a 67 together. It's like real bright and chimey. We can shut the verb off. So I loved it for that, but then if I did want to hit it with like an overdrive, it kind of had that more kind of tweedy basement kind of thing going. The, uh, the speaker drive down. Now the speaker drive is really killer because it truly emulates what you would get if you had kind of a newer speaker all the way to a fully broken in speaker to almost more cone cry kind of scenarios. Um, and it really does do what it's supposed to do. Like, it, you know, for me, it's like I tend to gravitate towards speakers that are less broken because they're a little bit more articulate. 
Um, but sometimes it's like, man, I wish I could just get a little bit more kind of pillowy feel, a little more broken feel. And I can do that. Here, I'll shut the verb off. And right now you can see the speaker is more towards the new side on the speaker drive. If you look at where we are, we're hitting it about, looks like plus three. Yeah, about three. Check it out. I'll just go all the way to the other side. Now it's, it's speaker drive all the way up. Hear how it gets a little more compressed? It's a little bit softer. And you can even see, now we're at about, uh, what is that? Uh, just a little below that now because it's, it's compressing like a speaker would. Just to let you hear the difference, I'll I'll put it back to where it was. So now it's that's definitely uh, less compressed and pretty kind of brand new speaker feeling. Slide it back over, and you can obviously do this with any of the cabs. It's just so cool to be able to uh, to just choose. Hey, I, I want this thing to feel a little bit more kind of pillowy and compressed and and uh, just really broken in, kind of tore up speaker. And and man, you can do it. So that's uh, that's number three. Let's go to four. This guy is kind of your your kind of Princeton, uh, you know, I guess one by ten uh, combo cabinet. And it does exactly what I want it to, which is sound like a smaller speaker. And what I dug it for, and the reason I saved it is on sessions, sometimes what I want to do, and oh, by the way, I'm still on a 57 and a Royer for this. What I want to be able to do is, uh, is go ahead and, and double apart. So I may be doing like a crunch thing. And you can hear, I've got quite a bit of room in there just because I dig it on that little combo. We can back it off. But what I can do is I could track that part and then I could go back to my four by and hit the same part. And I could spread those guys out left and right and it would just sound killer. So that's kind of what I use uh, that guy for, that little cabinet. And it's, it's great for just kind of the blues thing too. great I, I, I had a lot of fun with that one this one is a 2 by 12 cab I did change up the mics for this it's a, it's a 121 and a 414 and I, I it's got Alnico's in it 50 watt Alnico's so it's just super clean and pristine this is where I, I kind of want to point out the the whole getting that studio kind of produced sound you can do that with this and that's kind of what I did with these last two uh, rig models was I just wanted you guys to, to hear kind of how you could dial in like a produced sound, like ready to go uh, for a record or a demo, whatever it is you happen to be doing. So with this one, it's got, it's got a, kind of a, a dual delay thing going on in stereo. It's got a plate reverb going on and I do have an 1176 compression going on. It just works great for the, the clean thing.
And we could turn on, you know, kind of a slight overdrive and trim. But yeah, you've got so many possibilities for sounds. Just like I said, great produced sounds. Big and stereo and just cool. So that's kind of what I was using that for. Now the last rig setting is really kind of, I just called it solo soup. And I don't have a ton of delay and reverb on there, but I just kind of dialed it up to get like a, a solo sound. So there's gonna be a slight kind of a, a a delay. It seems like it's a ping pong, but it's not. It's still a dual delay, but it's just really subtle and a little bit faster with some plate uh, plate reverb. So same thing, I just wanted to be able to call up really quick like a kind of produced, kind of almost pop rock, kind of soupy solo tone and zero problem. Essentially that cabinet is the same uh, cabinet that I used uh, for the, the first rig. I just added a little bit more delay and reverb. Now we can adjust the mics, like if this is a little too dark, we can go ahead and back off the 57. I'm sorry, back off the Royer do more 57. We wanted it warmer, we could go way the other way, we could do a bunch more Royer. And these are straight up, we could pan them. That's the aux. There's so much more going on in this thing, but the video is going to get really, really long. So man, uh, great product. Thank you so much as usual for tuning in. You guys are all um, awesome. And I've got quite a few more videos coming up in the future. So, uh, so stay tuned. Thanks guys.